This video is basically dedicated for those who want to pursue their higher study, master, PhD, postdoc, or even other kind of study. They have to consider these four steps while conducting their research. And I want to explain that this video is not only dedicated to material science or natural science. For instance, if I'm expert in natural science, like physics, chemistry, and material science, it is not true. This, this, this method, this approach, the post-tip approach is valid for any kind of field. If you are doing chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, or if you are doing artificial intelligence, computer science, biological sciences, medicines, this four steps are valid. The first step and the four steps are very, very crucial. Why? I will explain in the coming slide. The second step and the third step are basically supporting the left side, the first step and the fourth steps. When just a student start their uh, study, uh, they basically stuck and they just block how I can start my study and what, which material I have to choose and why I have to choose this material. And the most important question is how I will know that which material is best, how I will know that what application I have to use that material. For example, I have to choose, uh, let's suppose sensors, chemical sensors, biological sensors, uh, or I have to use uh, drug deliveries applications like uh, the, the photovoltaics uh, because the, 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 the robots. So they basically stuck. So I am going to explain it in a very, very simple way. But if you do not know in this video, so don't worry, I will explain it thoroughly in detail, but just I want to give you the concept. You have to choose material first. This is the first and foremost step. When you choose a material, so in that time you have to also link that material to the device application because if you select a very, very good material, very, very best material, but that material has no application, I mean that material has no uses. So why you have to choose that material? Because it is useless. So when you are choosing your material, you have to look into the applications that whether this material will give me boost good results, good performance in my results, in my applications or not, right? So you have to choose your material very, very carefully. I will, I will explain in the next slide how you have to choose your material, right? So you, when you choose your material, so you have to use some method in order to get your desired material shape, the, the, the desired property of the material. For example, uh, in nanotechnology, uh, when you decrease the size of the material, so the property changes a lot. So when you select the material, you have to use some methods in order to get a desired shape, a desired morphology, desired property of the material, right? When you use some material, you synthesize, mean prepares that material, then you have to characterize. How characterize? For example, you choose some material like gold or some kind of material. This is showing good property or copper or something. And you use some method and you develop uh, the spheres like the, the nanoparticle. The spheres are the rods. So how you will know that I use some method and I develop rods? Because you don't know. Or how you will know that whether you use some method and that is a pure goal or not a pure goal, right? So you have to use some characterization techniques in order to know that whether you synthesize some material and whether you are looking for something, whether it is true or not. So that you have to use some characterization to that techniques. Once you use some techniques and some characterizations and you confirm that, okay, my material is fine. It's refined material. It is a pure material, no impurities then you have to test your material in the device applications. So these are basically four steps. Now let's see in the detail here. Uh, this slide is dedicated for those students who are natural science students. Natural science means like chemistry, physics, material science, uh, and those students, right? Uh, but it does not mean that it is only and only dedicated to natural science students. The methods, the flow, the, the, the approach is same for every kind of field. 
material selection for example i want to select carbon based material this is basically carbon based material because i know carbon is a, uh, is a, is a, is a is an exceptional material but how i will know this thing i will explain in the next video that how you will know that graphene is based cnt carbon nanotubes fullerene like a zero dimensional nanoparticle or magazine are based right like aerogel aerosol and silicene and arsenine these are some advanced material metal organic framework nowadays it has a lot of applications metal organic framework like most metal metal oxide semiconductor very common like metal based nanostructure material like a gold silver etc right now let's suppose you select carbon based material right but now you select carbon but what type of shape you wish like you want to you take the some carbon for carbon carbon based precursor but you want to make some cnts or graphene or something so you have to use some different material for that you see like cnt is one dimensional like one dimensional cnt and if you look into graphene it is basically two dimensional material or graphene oxide right so if you look into fullerene fullerene is basically zero dimensional material so when you are looking for fullerene you have to use different methods come on sir and if you are looking for a 2d material uh, so you have to develop graphene and graphene oxide so you have to use some different methods right this is how we use methods and for example if you want to make composites structure or some hybrid structures you have to use some different method in order to uh, get composite uh, hybrid structure of that particular material carbon carbon based material right once you use some like this this one i did you see this is particular nanoparticle this is sphere here and this is rods you see you select material but you want to get uh, synthesize which kind of shape so this is basically uh, we use synthesis methods now i have to characterize i have to characterize how i know that my material is basically hybrid or whether i get exactly a carbon based material using xrd xrd will tell me that whether it is a carbon or not carbon so this is i just give you example right similarly bet this material i get use acm scanning electron microscope to tell me that whether the material is zero dimension or it is one dimensional you see here similarly edx edx will tell me that whether your material is composite or not it shows the elemental compositions like ftr uvs photoluminescence in tr this photoluminescence in trans time resolved photoluminescence this basically uh, very very important characterization uh, techniques it's basically tell me that whether my material is suitable for one kind of thing or it is suitable for led or photovoltaics or something like this like xps tm these are some advanced characterization tools now look at the applications for example you you get uh, some uh, uh, material then you use some methods and then you characterize and from characterization results you just uh, also change your application is i explain that when i select material in that time i also say that i will use this material in particular applications but as i explain from pl in time resolve pl you can also uh, change your uh, device applications uh, for example if the pl from pl i can clearly understand that my material is for led best or for photovoltaics so this is this is uh, how we can also change our plane from here right like super capacitor water splitting very important from water water splitting we get hydrogen gas you see here and hydrogen gas is very very important application nowadays hydrogen gas very light like solar cell photovoltaics like leds you see here i exactly explain that from this pl and t time resolved photoluminescence we can say that this my material is suitable for photovoltaics or where my material is suitable for leds light emitting diodes like sensors bio and chemical sensors like catalysis gas storage this is the overview basically uh, how you design and how you start your uh, study now in the coming slide video i will thoroughly explain all these steps step number 1 how you will select your material from here you will get information who will tell you your colleague your teacher by yourself literature review how you will know which material is best this is very very interesting right so once uh, you have to select then how you have to find the uh, good groups or something so i will all these thing i will explain in the coming week